Light Test. I'm Josh, and this is Chad, and today we have the Hello? great... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't give you time to say hi. I, I didn't say hi. Say hi. 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 This is Chad, and today we get the great honor of talking to Demetrius, who's come up with a whole new concept of uh, basically RC transmitters and, and yep. the way we control RC planes. Demetrius, thank you for taking time to talk with us, and this is crazy. I, we could probably talk for a couple hours about this. Probably. It's all new. All new. Um, first of all, why don't we start off, Demetrius, who are you, and why did you do what you just did, which is crazy? Well, basically, I fly RC planes myself, and I've been doing R&D for a long time. I've been doing uh, projects for other companies, doing electronics by order for uh, commercial use or open source. Okay. So, uh, I was flying RC planes and doing some UAV work myself, and I just thought, I mean, I saw a lot of people doing uh, uh, FPV setups and doing uh, all the different equipment they had uh, with them just to be able to record something and view it. And I thought, I mean, I'm, it's my work anyway to be able to develop devices like that. So I thought to make one and uh, make it my own project because uh, before I didn't have any time to play around with all the electronics which I made for others. So I thought to make my own project and make that was it. That's how it born. Nice. And and so th this project here, what exactly is it and how does it work? Uh, it's an open source uh, remote control. It's not a transmitter, it's not a receiver because a lot of people are asking me uh, why aren't you calling your thing, your uh, device a transmitter or a receiver? That's because it's not. Technically you can control your receiver from your plane. Your plane can be controlling your remote control. So technically it's not a transmitter anymore. It's it's a new generation, it works differently. So wow. it's a remote control system. It's an open source remote control system. Oh, see, I, right off the bat I started calling it a transmitter, which was completely wrong then. Well, I'm curious, what, um, Demetrius, what, what's the receiver that's used in this system? Well, the RF module which are used uh, are the ZigBee, the ones I picked, but because the, the pinouts and the signals are basically the same for a number of different RF uh, transceivers, so you can switch over to any different kinds. But the ones I designed the boards for are the Zigbit ones, the Zigbit RF transceivers. So you say other kinds, other manufacturers? Yeah, sure. There are well, basically they do the same thing, and most of them just copy the same boards and just do, do a different board. Or sometimes they do different hardware antennas, internal, external. But the principle is the same. The RF uh, technology, which is 2.4 gigahertz, is still the same. Well, and I, and I think our audience is going to be interested in. Um, I know a lot of people have heard of your radio system and what you've done, but a lot of people are wondering what happened because it seemed like it, it ramped up, uh, things got exciting, and and then yeah. what happened? I started with a concept, basically. I made a sketch on 3D, just uh, some rough uh, shapes, and I went to Indiegogo to start a campaign. I showed people, I have an idea, let's make a remote control. I described it, but there wasn't enough funds because, I mean, to make a system like this, it takes a lot of funds to make it work. And I don't know, it didn't work out for me, so I didn't get the money. So I, I spent everything I had, did the R&D for it, spent a lot of money and made it myself. So uh, at one point when I did the, the first two prototypes, I was doing another campaign like with pre-orders to be able to, you know, to gather the funds this way. So uh, let's say if 100 people would order the unit, I would manufacture them. And uh, that's how it would get uh, born, you know, so that's how it would start. But to make a thousand units for this, to be able to make it affordable enough, you need to do at least uh, uh, $600,000. So to make a thousand units, you need $600,000. So it's a lot of orders, it's a lot of money. And, you know, it, it didn't work out because, I mean, I, it, it's my fault. I made it too complex from the start. So it didn't work out uh, to make it proper manufacturing either. So the only way which is left now is to be able to do it with 3D printing, do the boards myself, doing small batches like 10 units a month for 20. And One thing that shows us is your conviction. Obviously you're not being slowed down by any of these roadblocks, which shows that you really believe in this project. And from what I've seen and what you put into this thing, I mean you have three different frequencies you can work on, is that correct? Yeah, you can work on 900 MHz, 2.4 and the FPV star works on 5.8. Wow, that's amazing. So you have flexibility there, and your gimbals aren't even classic gimbals. I mean, the gimbals are a work of art themselves. They don't aren't even... They, they don't, uh, optical. Yeah, optical, yeah. I mean, uh, when, I, when I started doing it, I mean, uh, the thing that they move, actually, besides the fact that we work on uh, whole effect sensors and they are optically encoded, they actually move. And the, way, the reason they move is because they give you a lot more features. For example, uh, I had an idea for champions to be able to do some flight tricks on the remote control and record those moves and then play them back so that people can download uh, 
tricks of other people, you know, and uh, see the sticks move on the remote control before they try it. Because so, I've seen wow. a lot of people, they, they use flight simulators and they watch the sticks, how people are moving them. Yes. And they want to try a trick out and they don't know how. But if you can actually have the sticks move for you, you can learn a lot easier that way. So the sticks also, move on their own? Yeah, they move on their own. Also, they have a lot of feedback. You can, you can adjust the strength on which way move so that you have less or more feedback on the sticks themselves. And um, the, the main reason I did it is for, to be able to learn easy, easier uh, RC and to be able to do some other features on top of that in the future. Now, can it do a force feedback where the, it actually reacts to the G-forces that the plane is feeling? Technically, the remote control can do that, but there are no servers set up on, on the plane itself to be able to send that back. A lot of people on the forum were asking about that. And, there are some tricks which you can do to be able to do that. I mean, it's just a small modification on the servo itself so that you can send the feedback of the servo back to the control. But technically, it's possible. Now, when you're talking about modular, uh, this is also a new concept I've never seen before. Um, you're talking about shoulder switches, and uh, also you showed me earlier your FPV module, which is truly separate and integratable as well, too. Uh, why, why don't you hold that up to the camera and talk about that? Yeah, well, uh, there are three things which are basically modular on the remote control itself. The FPV modules, okay. the shoulder switches, and the RF modules which are on the back. Okay. Now, the FPV modules, uh, this is the simple version which basically has the video receiver inside of it. It has the RF transceiver because the module itself, if you can take it out and you can use it remotely. Let me just take it out here. So you can just take that out, and That's you see amazing. on the back there are connectors. Yes. And uh, basically those charge up the, the internal battery. Also they send some other signals for the unit to know that it's out. And you can actually take this out of the main unit and be able to watch your video, remote control the camera. Because you see there are some extra buttons here as well. Yes. These buttons are also assignable, just like on the main unit. So you can assign these joysticks to control different servers on a different channel. Okay. And to be able to move your camera and also view it at the same time with just one unit. So in real world, say, you know, we're always trying to capture air-to-air -air or videography of, of our planes. We could actually have someone with control in a separate gimbal with the camera while another person's flying it, and they just watch it and control the gimbal, completely separate of the transmitter, but it's all working together. Sure, it's just one unit, but a lot of people can use it at the same time. And you can have even more FPV modules on top of that, and they say they also communicate with the same main unit. So it's not just one, it works like a network. So Okay. A lot of things work together in different ways. So, so what does it what does it cost per system uh, right now, currently? Uh, the basic setup, like with, uh, with with your own RF module from Futab or whatever, and with the sticks uh, still moving and all the basic features without the FPV receiver on top, just like a basic remote control, it's about four hundred to three hundred fifty euros. That's not oh, bad. That's not bad at that's all. That's not bad at all. No, it's not bad. Most advanced FPV system with the Linux, with every bells and whistle, it comes to about 1,200 euros. I mean, the whole system, like having a computer in your hands. That's that's amazing. This system, if you like Futaba, you can use a Futaba module. If you like Spectrum, you can use a Spectrum High Tech. Um, any of those modules will fit in the back of there. Sure, I mean, even the, the, the UHF, the Dragonfly uh, transmitter and the receivers, yes. as long as the thing can uh, do PPM reception and send it back, you can connect to the system. Amazing, amazing. Now, we, we were talking earlier about FPV. You're, you really put a lot of heart into this FPV, uh, where even your receivers, um, you were showing me earlier, have, uh, have advanced features built into the receivers, like the gyros for copters and, and things like that. Can you go over that again? Yes. Sure. Uh, there are uh, basically three things uh, which are on the model end. You have your model controller, which is basically like your receiver on a normal system. Okay. But the thing is that the model controller can be expanded to multiple channels, up to 40 channels. 40. So, you don't, so yeah, if you buy OSRC, you don't buy it like for 10 channels or 12. You can do it up to 40. It doesn't matter. Because, no. I mean, technically, I don't know why the people are... Uh, PPM systems are different from... Uh, what I'm using here, because PPM you have pulse and you have to have a delay, and uh, when, the more channels you have, the faster it has to be, and it's complicated. But when you're doing digital uh, processing and you're sending the data digitally, it doesn't matter how many there are. And, and as far as you're showing me a receiver early, what, what's built, like for helicopter pilots or quadcopters, what's built into that receiver? Yeah, sure. The receiver itself, uh, the receiver is one part. The other part is the sensor module, and the other part is the FPV module. Now, the sensor module, it's, it works, uh, the, the idea behind it is the same as on a helicopter with gyro. But the difference is that 
There is a three axis gyroscope, three axis accelerometer, and the three axis compass on it. So it works also as your sensor array for using for UAV flight. For example, if you have a plane, you can assign the gains on the gyro for your ailerons. If you have a helicopters, you can assign either the compass for your tail or the accelerometer for your tail. Oh my and goodness. also you can assign the accelerometer for your tilt and pan and stuff like that. Yeah, I think Demetrius has, has a very similar uh, kind of mentality as what we do. You know, we're really trying to build the community and the hobby. And um, when we saw what he was doing and the way that he was going about it, you know, we really wanted to help any way we could. So when, after you watch this, go check out the website. Look at what he's putting together. Look at what he's doing. And, and uh, just let people know about this project and what's going on so it can get out there. Yeah, I promise you, it's going to turn the RC industry on its head uh, once it does get out there. And I, Demetrius, from the bottom of my heart, I truly believe it will. Um, just from what you're doing uh, once people get an idea of what the concept is like you said a lot of the system is 20 plus years old you have a whole new way of looking at it and I, I hope it's adopted soon I really am amazed by what you're doing thank you I appreciate it yeah and we want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us because uh, you know this is really special I haven't seen you interviewed by anyone else um, yeah. so I don't I don't know why uh, I don't know either, but I mean, uh, just uh, I just want to ask people to go to the forums, uh, go to the website, just leaving some feedback on, on the site itself, just to letting me know that, you know, people like this and uh, want me to go on because, I mean, it, you know, it's hard when you're doing it by yourself and you have to watch the website and do the designs and do everything else all by yourself, it takes time. So even if I don't reply on something uh, in the Facebook, I'm always on the website. So if someone has any questions, just ask me. If you don't find something, just ask me and I'll be there. We thank you guys for watching, and Demetrius. Good luck on everything, yeah, and thank you for taking you know, the We'll time do what we can to help, so we'll stay in touch, and uh, hopefully after this video airs, uh, you'll get some response, and and well, you'll see you how many. It. Yeah, and people see. Yeah. You'll see how many people really are interested in what you're doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thanks, guys, for watching, and uh, we're gonna have to wrap up for today, and um, we got a lot more things to do. Yeah. So Demetrius, thank you, yeah. and thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye bye. bye.